great about that, other than trying to help people who are confused in the state of confusion. Welcome back to the Immigration Answer Show. My name is Jim Hacking. This is episode number 582 of the Immigration Answer Show. How's everybody doing? Coming to you live <clears throat> from San Diego, California. I'll be here for the next hour trying to answer as many immigration law related questions as I can. Uh, Nurse Lara says today is Taco Tuesday, and that's great because Ismail's coming to take me out for tacos as soon as the show is over. So, how about that? It will indeed be Taco Tuesday, and what better place to get tacos than Southern California? And I ain't talking about Taco Bell or Chipotle. How's everybody doing? Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know who you are. Roy B. was here first. Uh, Jay Cruz is watching, as she often does, from North Dakota. We got England in the house. Laura's up in Seattle. Vishnu says hello from New York. We have Ohio in the house. Shauna's back in Texas for now. Anthony's here. Kawika's here, as Kawika often is. Uh, we got Texas, New York City, Trinidad. Uh, Hope is here, as she so often is. Go Padres, Kawika says. Florida, Hope is always in, usually in Florida. Kerwin's in Brooklyn. Uh, Sat says Mexican tacos are the best. Uh, I don't know that I've had other kinds of tacos. I guess I guess I probably have. Um, Brad says he needs advice on an issue, so let's let's give Brad the link. And to everybody else, thanks for the reminder. Here is the here's the link to come ask me a question. Nurse Lar, did you get the alert this time? I know the other day you did not, so let me know if the alerts are coming out properly. Here's the link. And TC is here. Hello, TC. Are you frozen? I think TC's frozen. TC, are you there? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead. Hi. Um, should I just tell you my situation? Or this is the yeah, first yeah. time I've ever been on? Oh, yeah. People just come on and they tell us what's going on. And then they ask me their questions. So you're, you're our first caller of the day. Okay. Uh, our situation is, is uh, we were, me and my husband were both born and raised here in the U.S. Um, my husband um, was in the military, he was stationed in Germany, had a relationship there. There was a child from that relationship. He's 19 now. He's currently living in Germany, but came here for a visit recently um, and would like to move to the United States. Um, he is on the birth my the birth certificate my husband's on the birth certificate and we have been trying to find out information and we're finding out maybe some of the information isn't correct um and we're just wanting to know how do we go about immigrating him here the correct way um is this something that we can do on our own um do we need to get a lawyer to be able to make this move faster and then there's also um, he's in the school system there in Germany and we're trying to understand how that school system works because we don't know if he should wait or if we should have him just come on over. So there's kind of a, you know, two level thing. Right now he's inside the United States? Right now he's in Germany, um, but he came here through a passport for a visit. Through a German passport? Yes. Okay. And um, so this is a this is an out of wedlock child son born to a U.S. citizen who lived his whole life in the United States. The father. In, he lived his whole life in Germany with his mother that is German. No, no, I'm sorry. You, the, the father of the child. Yes. That's your husband, right? Yes. He's lived his whole life in the United States, except for when he was stationed over in Germany. 
so that kid is probably a U.S. citizen. Um, he thinks the kid's probably a U.S. citizen. He was never taken to a consulate or given a social security. Okay, he was never taken to a consulate or given a social security number. Doesn't change the, the neither of those things have anything to do with the analysis. If, okay, so if, if how child, if a child is born to a U.S. citizen who um, <clears throat> I mean, and I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in California right now, so I don't have my book, so I can't tell you the exact rules and everything. But generally speaking, if the dad lived in the United States for at least five years before the kid was born, and the kid, the dad's name is on the birth certificate, there might be some DNA questions that come up later. But the, the, the kid is either a citizen or not as an operation of law. It's not so much, it's not so much, whether he registered it or whether um, he got a social security number, that stuff's not important. He either is a U.S. citizen or he's not. Um, did the father, your husband, did he support the kid throughout his life? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And was there any kind of relationship at all? Yes. 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 Okay. So um, if you want to email me, I can help you figure out if he isn't. When I get back to St. Louis next week, I'll be back on Monday. I can get out my books and I can see. But I think generally, um, if we can show that the dad supported him and that he, the dad lived in the United States his whole life, and um, I think it's a high probability that the boy, the son is a U.S. citizen already, and he, just, he needs to get a passport. Okay. Passport. Yep. Okay, so, so how how do I get you my information um, sure. so that I can email you or you can email me? Yeah, sure. So um, I will put it on the bottom of the screen so that everybody has it. Um, and I'll just leave it there the rest of the show. You can just email me info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com and we'll go from there. Okay. Just say I'm TC. I was the first one on the call on uh, episode 582, which is today. And then we'll just go from there, but I probably won't get back to you until Monday or Tuesday next week. Okay. And then, um, will you give me information on like your costs and things like that to help yeah. us? Or? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, if, if the plan is just to get him a, a, a passport, you can probably do that in Germany without me. If you want to establish that he's a U.S. citizen for purposes of USCIS, that's an N-600, and that's something we can help with once he's here. But we can talk about it. I won't charge you for any of this initial stuff. That's, that's just me figuring shit out. Okay. Okay. Any other questions before he moves on to somebody else? No. Um, we can pick it up with him when you, you talk to him next time. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, TC. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, bye. I always love it when there's the person on the side um, chiming in. That's always funny. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on. Big ups. What's up, Rich? Rich is here. Wait, can you hear me? I hear you just fine. How you doing? I'm doing good, my man. Uh, the reason why I get on today, I was telling you that uh, I got my green card in the mail yesterday. Nice. I love it. Congratulations. And today is actually my one year anniversary also. <laughs> nice. So you got it pretty quickly. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. So basically, uh, as you always said about the expedited request that uh, it doesn't work, I did it twice and it actually worked. Nice. Nice. Well, so uh, give us your give us your timeline. You came in from Jamaica on a visit visa or what? Yeah, I came on a B1B2 on March 17, 2022. Yep. And then I got married on April 16, 2023. Uh, I father, I went. Me and my spouse filed the I-130 on May 16, and I filed the I-485 on May 26. So I actually did it the way you always tell people not to do it, but I didn't know about you then. That's okay. You filed the I-130 electronically and the 45 on paper? Right, right. Got it. And then within like uh, a week, I got the biometrics. Within like about a month after... I got requests for evidence for the medical and the IL-64, which I submitted like within 30 days after. But I never applied for the travel document nor the work authorization. And then uh, on December 27th, I applied to expedite the I-130. 
which uh, they approved the expedite request within like a few days, like six days later. And then they requested for evidence, which I actually submitted by a mail by the post which office, is, which you always do not recommend to do. So you didn't follow any of my advice, but you still get your green card. Shows you what shows you what I know. <laughs> yeah, so I yeah, so I didn't do it that way. So I waited like 60 days, and I'm like, nah, I think they lost it. I uploaded it online, and within two days they approved the I-130. And then uh within two weeks later, I apply to expedite the i-485 and then within a week they approve it and then within uh they approve the expedite request within a week and then about three days later got approved what and um, the green card covered the man that's great what was the evidence that they asked you for uh they just asked for marriage evidence since the day we married until that date they send the request mm -hmm. for evidence that's all i'm glad you got it man that's great news thanks for the call I appreciate it, man. I would like to be with y'all, man. All right, later. <laughs> appreciate it. Big ups to all the Yardies out there. Old Rich got his green card. That's pretty good. Let's go to Brad. Hello, Brad. You're on mute. You're on mute, Brad. Hello, Brad. Okay, sorry about that. That's um, okay. Just a quick question, and I'll give you a little background information. Me and my fiance, um, we started talking about two years ago, roughly a little over a year and a half ago. I invited her to the United States just as friends then uh, to just kind of show her around, introduce her to something. Well, she applied for a B1, B2 travel visa, mm -hmm. and last October we got engaged. We didn't want to change her. So we figured it would mess if we tried to adjust anything to adjust our travelers and stuff. So we just left it alone. We stayed off of each other's social media, tried to stay as low key as we possibly could. Well, Friday before last, uh, her B1, B2 was denied. So we are trying to figure out now what would be the next step we need to take. How long do we need to? What we apply for a, a K1 or a K3. What embassy were we talking about? Bogota. When was the last time you saw each other face to face? Uh, that would have been on last October. October 23? Yeah. Give or take, somewhere around there. And when they asked her what was the reason you want to come visit the United States, what did she tell them? She told them to visit some friends and uh, basically see some things in the United States. Then he asked her if she had his family here, and she told him no, and he denied her on a 214B. Yeah, so, I mean, if you had told, if you had asked me, I would have said, don't mess around with that, because that's just going to get denied. How old is she? I'm sorry? How old is she? 30. Yeah, so if she doesn't have like significant reasons to come back, a lot of visit visas are denied for people of a marrying age. So that's not entirely surprising. So now the, in answer to your question, I don't think you have to wait too terribly long. I'm not, I don't think you, I mean, in, I don't think you have to wait just because the visit visa got denied to go ahead with the fiance case. I might wait a few weeks, but nothing, nothing longer than that. Yeah. Well, we are going to believe in July and, um, I have her call the embassy today. Can you, can you hold your Can you hold your mic up by your mouth? It, it's I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, just keep short now. We are going to Belize in July. Okay. I told her this morning to call the embassy in Bogota to see about getting a transit visa because the only flights we can find transit through Miami. And yeah, no, don't mess around with that. No, no, stop, stop making it look desperate like she's desperate to come to the United States. Do not do that. Yeah. Well, that's what they told her this morning, that she can apply for it, but she's probably not going to use it. What about, so I just did a video the other day, and I've talked about this a lot on the show, Brad. I'm not a big fan of fiancé visas right now because they, they're they not going faster than spouse cases, which is the main reason most people claim that they want to do a fiancé case instead of a spouse case. But there's also a little provision that allows the State Department to let an approved K-1 expire and send it back to USCIS. So 
if you are going to meet sometime this summer and you think you're going to get married, I might argue for going ahead and getting married and then applying for an I-130. Okay. Um, will she be able to travel to the United States? No, she's not coming to the United States till she gets her immigrant visa or her K-1. That, that, we're not messing around with the embassy anymore until we get legit in the approach that we're taking. Okay. That so. All right. That pretty much answers my question. Thank you so much for your time. See you, Brad. Good luck, buddy. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Hamza's here. What do you say, Hamza? In our, he's in our favorite. Hamza's in our favorite dining room or favorite living room. Yeah, it's one of my most favorite living rooms out here. It's so crazy. So many people have that exact same um, living room. How you I, doing? I'm glad I have it because my background <laughs> is pretty bad. What's but, up? So I, um, I'm out of Pakistan and my wife is in the States. My I-130 got approved, but I have some red flags in my case. I was in the States back in 2017 under a student visa. And I was traveling back to Pakistan for my summer break while I was going back to the U.S. entering again in 2019. They put me into secondary and I, I was working under my student visa. They found out, they put a five-year ban and they sent me back. Yeah. And that ban lifts off in <clears throat> August this year. So mm -hmm. my concern was my I-130 is approved. They've requested I'm in NVC step, the uh, NVC step, they've asked me for some documents. Should I wait for my ban to lift before I submit those documents? No, or... as long as it's done. I mean, Islamabad is going to take forever. So as long as, as long as it's done before you have your visa interview, which it will be, just keep going. Okay. And do you know what is the timeline for the visa interview? Oh, I think you know what it'll take four or five months to get documentarily qualified at the nbc and then i think islamabad's like 12 to 16 or 18 months it's ridiculous plus plus yours will take longer uh mine will take a little longer mm -hmm. is there a way we can like cut time down i'm open to like hiring an attorney or something to get this expedited oh. I think I think you should stop thinking about expediting, but I do think you should get an attorney involved because I think that they, they're not going to want to give you the visa. So you're operating from even even when your five years are up, you're still operating behind behind. So I, I think I think the idea that they're going to expedite your case is never going to happen. But I do think you need an attorney to help you just even get the visa. OK. I, I did try to reach out to you guys. I haven't heard back, so I was wondering if I could get some idea of how much it would cost for a case like me at the stage I am in right now. Yeah, so um, it'd probably be somewhere around five to six thousand dollars. And is that payable in payments, or is it just yeah. like upfront cost? Yeah, no, no, no. We have a payment plan, or they can you can find your your wife can finance it, or we can do a payment plan. Yep. Okay. Uh, the email address, should I use this? Because I did fill in the form on the website. I, I just didn't hear back from anyone. Yeah, I'll, um, I, I, will, I will have the team track you down tomorrow. But if you didn't want to send one more email, I will um, make sure that they follow up tomorrow, OK? OK, all right. Uh, Thanks, Hamza. See you, buddy. No. Thanks. Bye. All right, all right. All right, all right. Gigi's back. What's up, Gigi? Hey, Jim. How are you? Great. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Um, I don't have any questions for myself, but my brother's in the uh, live, like you told me to oh, bring yeah? him in. Yeah, so he's Yusuf. Yusuf. Okay, cool. I'll go grab him. Do you want to stay on or you want me to just, you want me to get him? Uh, sure, you can keep me on. Hi, Yusuf. Hi, how are you? I can barely hear you, buddy. No, I can't hear you at all. No, why don't you go where Gigi is? Uh, he's no, he's, he's in America. Oh, he's in America. I mean, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now we got you. What's up? Hi. Um, I have um, I have a couple of questions. Okay. So, so now I'm um, a student here um, in the in the states of Minnesota, and um, and I'm on an F1 visa. Mm -hmm. And um, my visa is expired, but my I-20 is valid. And um, 
I'm part of the case with, uh, with Gigi and my family. Yeah. But I'm over 21. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if it's a problem if I don't attend uh, the interview. Well, I talked to Gigi about it the other day. I mean, you can, if you go overseas and something goes wrong, um, I think that you might not be able to come back on your F1. So I think there's an argument to be made that you should file for adjustment. Is, is everything current on the case? Yes, sir. But you haven't, you haven't done that yet. You haven't filed for adjustment. No, I get, uh, I thought I can only find for adjustment if they get accepted. Um, as I told Gigi the other day, your case is a little bit tricky and I don't know the answer to the question. I'd have to do some research for it. Mm -hmm. um, I do have one question. When you applied for your student visa, did you let them know that this case was pending out there for you, for your dad? Because I, I wasn't expecting any, like I didn't even like all this happened out of nowhere. I didn't even expect like, you know, me coming to the States, it happened. And then we didn't even know when, when, when this case would get accepted or yeah, but that's 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 different than what I'm asking you. The question on the I-130 is, or on the DS-160 is, has anybody filed an immigrant visa petition for your for your benefit? And so, I think you're gonna you might have a bit of a problem um, the, if you mark no on that box, regardless of whether it was going to become current while you were here. That doesn't really change the analysis as to whether or not what answer you should have put. So, what I actually what I actually think you should do is either you or us track down your DS-160, do the research as to whether or not, I mean, what, do they have a visa appointment yet? Uh, April 28th. Oh, so it's like in 12 days. I, I, I think, yeah, I think that, and I, I'm not saying this for sure, but I think that there's a real potential for problems for you if you go to Egypt. If you go to Egypt, um, even if everybody else gets approved, I could see the embassy in Cairo saying, you lied to us when you got your student visa. We're going to revoke that student visa and we're not going to give you your green card and you're going to need a waiver. So I think there's an, I don't, I'm not saying this for sure, but I think there's an argument that you should try to adjust your status here after they all go to their interview. So, from, so basically do it from here. I'm not saying that for sure. I'm saying that's what my gut tells me. I think you have a problem. Um, I have to go back to my DS-160 then and check. Yeah. And then, okay, uh, one one other question about, um, about the whole um, sponsorship situation. So we have... I uh, doesn't like talking about it here. <laughs> What, what, yeah, I already talked to Gigi about the affidavit support. We don't talk about that on the show because it's so boring. Okay. All right. Thanks, Yusuf. Bye, Gigi. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you guys. Yep, for sure. Hey, Donna's here. Oh. Big up, Donna. Big up to all the Yardies. I didn't know about if Donna's going to be here. It's so late, you know. Um, what time is it in Jamaica? I don't even know. It's probably like... Let's see. It's five o'clock here, so it's probably ten o'clock in Jamaica. I don't know. Uh, Charlie's here. Hello, Charlie. Jim, how are you? I'm well. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Uh, this will probably be a bit of a change of pace. Your normal questions on the show. Uh, I just oh, want great. to thank you for all that you do. Uh, I actually work as an immigration paralegal in town as well here in St. Louis. Oh, um, nice. And yeah, at a firm that I think that. You may have heard of before. Um, we are, you know, we send clients to one another often. Nice. Um, but I just wanted to thank you for the work you do for the people on the show, and just I enjoy listening a lot and oh, cool. hearing, Thanks. thinking through the the cases and the awesome people in the community here. So, just oh, wanted to thank great. you for that. And my question for you is: um, I have been admitted to law school uh, starting this fall. Nice. Really excited, hoping to go into immigration, and just wanting to hear your law school advice, particularly uh, for someone who has immigration in mind. Are you going to SLU? Yeah. Um, so, you know, do the clinics, do whatever external stuff you can um, 
take whatever you can. The The guy that teaches over there, I don't know that he's ever practiced, and I think he's sort of theoretical. Now, it's good that you're already working at a, at a good firm. I think I know where you're working, so I know that's a good firm. And I think that um, take admin law, which I never took, um, try to get, you know, try to get experience. I mean, are you, are you going to go at night or are you going to go in the day? You're going to go full time. I'm going to do full time. Full time. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, just, uh, you know, intern or work whenever you can. I mean, I, I, I did talk to a young lady, uh, at the university she goes to school, a law school in Pennsylvania. And I said, I would be really active, Charlie on LinkedIn, even as a law student, mm -hmm. I would be posting about things that happen. I would be treat. I would be. I mean, obviously, you're not going to give legal advice, but you can talk about things in the news that happen. I would say really build a network and a presence on LinkedIn. And then, you know, the other thing is, Amani and I both we wrote on the Law Journal, and that really helped too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, send me an email and stay in touch. And you know, we, you know, I don't want to hire you away from a friend of ours, but you know, we're, <laughs> all, we're always happy. We're always happy to work with people that have immigration experience or a dedicated um, reason to love immigrants. So it's all good. Awesome. Appreciate that very much, Jim. Enjoy right, your time in San Diego. Thanks, buddy. See ya. Take care. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's our friend, Charlie. Hopefully he'll come back. We, we always like to hear about the law school experience. And that's my alma mater, St. Louis University. So there you go. Um, and I think that's actually where I met Charlie's boss. Bosses, I think. Yep. He's nodding. Yeah, yep. Yep. Good people. Uh, one of his bosses was the year ahead of me. And the other one was two years ahead of me. And I love him. All right, Sarah's here. Hello, Sarah. Hi. Hello. How, how you doing? Good. How are you? Oh, great. I'm great. Thanks for the show today. Sure. What's up? How can I help you? Okay. So I got granted um, back um, in 2022 as um, a Sally. Great. So I... Um, I applied for my green card and for my kids, uh, which is um, in Mongolia. And um, currently, um, my boyfriend is a citizen. Citizen, so I just wondering, what if I marry with him and um, apply for the marriage green card? Is it gonna affect to I seven thirty? So, so let's back up. How old are your kids? Uh, 17 and 15. Okay. So, uh, and, and you're telling me that right now you have a pending green card application on file as someone who received asylum a year ago. Yes. Um, actually I got granted, um, for yeah. Yeah. Asylum a year. Okay. And your boyfriend is a U.S. citizen. Yes. And was he born in the United States, or was he? Did he get? How did he become a citizen? Uh, he is not born here. He got the green card uh, from his uh, ex-wife. Okay, so that's why I was asking. So sometimes, <clears throat> how how long ago did he get divorced? Uh, I think it's maybe eight, nine years. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So here's what I'm thinking. If, if you get married because you want to be together and for love and it's a real marriage. And if that marriage happens before your 17 year old turns 18, then your then husband could file for you and could file for, or, or could file for your two kids. Right. So um, you can't you could have two different green card cases pending. I probably wouldn't recommend that. I don't know. I, sometimes, you know, I'm open to it. But more importantly, those kids are going to come a lot faster as the stepchildren of a U.S. citizen than they are through the I-730 or as the children of a green card holder. Oh, I see. Because um, my um, oldest son is here in the u.s and then uh right after the, i get the 17 year old is in the united states no i got three kids mm. and uh, two is in back in my home country and the one was with me and i filed for him um on 2022 august 
and then recently we got uh, he got interviewed and then granted the oldest son yeah he got asylum yes awesome well so that's my vote my vote is if you how long till how long till your 17 year old turns 18 she, she's um 1990 um 2007 this year he's turning 17. yeah i know but like when what month uh august august so if you guys get married before august and he applies for them that's going to be really really good oh, okay yeah and my boyfriend was it's taken forever and why don't you marry me and then we uh, we do in other way so I I vote yes for this plan. Okay, so I was waiting for so long and then I was confused. Okay, all right, that was it. Thanks, Sarah, good luck. You got, that, 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 was, that was a good call. That was like a law school exam question because you have an approved asylum case and you have a pending green card and you got your oldest son uh, asylum through the 730 and you have pending 730s for the kids and you're marrying a U.S. citizen who could file their own and for you. It was a great question. So thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, I was contacted a couple of lawyers and then they had no answer. So yeah, awesome. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. All right. See ya. <laughs> thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Now, wait a minute. How in the hell can it be 723 in Jamaica? That that blows my mind. That means Jamaica is the same time zone as, as St. Louis. Is that right? Their central time zone in Jamaica? That just seems so crazy. That means, does that mean Jamaica is west of Atlanta? This can't be right. I think Donna's pulling my pulling my leg. I don't think it's really 730 in Jamaica. Hold on. Let's let's take a look. This is going to blow my mind. What time is it in Jamaica? Holy shit, it's 7.23. Oh, they must not do daylight savings. I guess, do they not do daylight savings? What the heck? How is this? Jamaica is the same as St. Louis and Florida. Yeah, they don't, must not have daylight savings. So that would put them in the, like the eastern time zone, really, right? Um, an hour ahead. Holy cow. My mind... Phew, blown jamaica one hour ahead so does that mean does that mean there's times in the year when jamaica is two hours ahead of us new york is one hour ahead of jamaica i can't believe this this is really blowing my mind i i don't know what to i don't know i don't know if i can go on with the show this is just so confusing to me <laughs> all right uh b1 b2 about to expire hello b oh look at this Oh, I just stopped the car, Jim. How are you, Ben? I'm good. I like seeing the stop sign in the intersection. What's up? Uh, no, just like stop it right now because uh, yeah. it wasn't good oh, to good. drive like while driving. I'm I'm living in Chicago right now. So it's okay, great. About to... Go ahead. Uh, so, Jim, I just like to ask you. Uh, just I just arrived in New uh, in US in November, and then uh, uh, I just met my wife here. So I'm just about to get married. In I mean, like she was in divorce process, which is gonna be ending. 17 uh, like in somewhere in the may and at the same time my b1 b2 is gonna expire in the may so i'm just like try to understand i'm even though i emailed you i'm just trying to understand how i'm gonna get the help in this one should i have leave in the us or should should i leave here or and your get spouse, married and your spouse is a u.s citizen exactly did you know your spouse before you came to the united states on this visit uh not really but like i met her online and stuff like that it seems like you know we if we used to chat along, then you know we get in the relationship and all. So it's kind of like a, some something very very serious. And she just like live uh, live nearby in Chicago, so we just meet uh, very often. And we plan to move in May or in August, and live together here somewhere. So wait, so part... so here here's what I'm trying to figure out. Well, first of all, what country are you from? Uh, I'm from India, but and I'm, I'm brought up born and brought up in Dubai. So okay, and. Have you been to the United States before this trip? Uh, no. So this is I've your first? Planning, yeah, I've been planning to, but I just, this is my first trip. And when you got your visit visa to the United States and they asked you, why do you want to come visit the United States? What decision, what reason did you give them? Well, I just uh, travel so many countries uh, since um, um, sometimes I like, you know, I, I do blogging for YouTube. 
So I just tell them I'm like, here for vacation and stuff like that. Since I'm I'll running give, the YouTube I'll channel, is the same. I don't, know anybody, I don't know anybody who goes on YouTube. Okay. And then, <laughs> and then, uh, so here's a good question. So, so you didn't really answer my question about, did you really know her before you came to the United uh, States? No, I, I met her here in online on, on Facebook. Okay. So, yeah. so when you came to America, mm -hmm. what cities did you visit? Uh, I've been in New York. Then I moved to Chicago. I was used to do like, you know, uh, vlogging in New York, New York. Then I just moved here because I just mostly make 4K videos for YouTube. So that's exactly what I've been doing since very long time. And then I've been like a lot of countries, especially in Europe and UK, been there many times. So I'm just how long case. are you living with your are you living with this person? Uh no, we used to live now because we're planning to move in um uh, May or August. So currently she living in uh Wisconsin, which is uh one hour drive two hour drive from here to Chicago. Okay. Yeah, and so she come here very often to meet me and stay with me, like, you know, for a couple of weeks. So we just, since she have one children, so she couldn't move otherwise. Uh, so you, you, you moved to Chicago, even though she's in Wisconsin. So that's good. That's good. It's not like you yeah. moved in with her right away or something. Yeah, I can, I can move there. I mean, like, we're just planning either I can go there or that she can come here. So we don't have any problem moving here then and stuff like that. So I'm just a bit confused now. So what should I do? Should I leave the U.S. or should I stay here to get married? Well, I mean, so do you have a multiple entry visa or a one-time entry visa? Uh, I got multiple entries. Multiple entries, okay. Yeah. And he, um, when did her when did her divorce become final? Oh uh, well, it's, exactly. She was I'm a bit confused now because I got a picture. She just like she mentioned 17 May, and my visa is gonna be expired in 13 May. <laughs> so so in, other just, words, in other words, she's still married right now. Yeah. She's on the divorce process. She already divorced now. She doesn't live with uh, the person. Yeah, She's been yeah. like divorced for a long time, but she never, you know, uh, sent me the uh, divorce process because she just done. She did it now, like a couple of months before, I think in Jan. So, Wait, but here's wasn't... so here's here's the million dollar question. Did her prior marriage involve anybody getting an immigration benefit? Nope. Nope. So she's just like a straight up American who was married to a straight up American. Uh, yeah, she. Uh, yeah, she had. Uh, she never. She never get anybody benefit for her before. She was like has some relationship before, but no one's uh, applied through her to the green card. I think. And she, and she was born in the United States. Exactly, she's uh, real American. She's what? She's uh, before she was born here. Okay, well, um, I mean, I think for lots of reasons. Given the fact that you have the right to come back like mm -hmm. six or eight six or eight months from now, okay. Given the fact that she'll still be married on the day your visa expires, yep. <clears throat> I don't think it's worthwhile going out of status and hanging out and waiting for that divorce to become final. I think I would just play it straight. Um, now, if you leave, I think you want to wait at least eight or nine months before coming back. I exactly. She doesn't want that. What do you mean? She doesn't want to. She doesn't want me to leave. That's exactly she been trying. She, she just told me that. She doesn't want you to leave? Yeah. She just like, she was to move with me here. So she was like, you know, we've been planning to move here. So we just are arranging apartment and stuff like that. So I, mean, I just think, I just think there's problems with, even if, even if, let's, let's say you had a two year visa, right? Okay. Let's, say, let's say you had the right to stay here for two whole more years. Okay. I wouldn't want you to file for your green card until, you know, maybe a year after her divorce was final or maybe, maybe after, you know, nine or 10 months. Okay. You understand? Yeah. So I think getting married on the rebound and moving in right away. I mean, I, for all kinds of reasons, I just think that's a bad idea. If I were you, I'd be thinking about going out of the country, go doing some more YouTube vlogging somewhere else. Come back in seven, eight, nine months. Keep the relationship going. Let her wind up her divorce. Mm -hmm. And I just think, you know, bouncing from one marriage to another and then trying to sponsor someone, problems. Okay. She never sponsored no, or no one before. Uh, I know. I, know. I know. So, But she's still married. And and, that, and in other words, you'd, you'd be arguing that most of your relationship was formed with a married woman. And I just think that they're going to look down on that. Okay. So 
what should I do now? Like, I mean, I think you should plan on leaving on time and come back in six or eight months and see how everything's going. And then if you want to get married because you're in love, then do mm -hmm. that. But don't just do it to play visa issue. You know what I mean? Okay. I mean, like, what what happened if I overstay and get married here? So do you have any issues in the future? Future? I mean, like, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm going to get married in May. I might, like, you know, get married. After so first, so, so, so I don't want you to get married right after the divorce is final. I think that's dumb. Why are you going to okay. do that? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm thinking, like, maybe I should stay away, like, a couple of few months, like, maybe get married end of this year. So what do you think? How was that be? I like, I mean, it happens all the time. It would be forgiven. It, okay. Um, it would probably get approved, but they're, you know, when, when you're out of status, that's the first thing on the list for the fraud indicators. Is there an age gap? Uh, no, we have same, same age, 30, 39. Is, 30. She, is she of Indian descent? Yep. Oh. Okay. Well, um, I mean, ideally, no, you wouldn't fall out of status. No, um, she's not. She, I mean, Indian, like from, from my country. Yeah. No, no, no. She's not from the, she's, uh, from here. Okay. Well, there's lots of Indian people from here, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, okay. so no. I don't, I don't like your plan. I know you want me to bless your plan. I don't want to bless your plan. I don't like the plan. Mm -hmm. I think that, but I also think that this kind of, I mean, I think if you get married in December and you apply, they're probably going to sit on the case for a while to see if she gets divorced again, or if she gets sick of waiting with you. I don't think it'll be an easy case. I mm -hmm. think it'll get dragged out. Okay. So you're going to help me like if I take care of, you know, if I hire you as a, as a, as a lawyer, sure. so will you help me with that? Yeah. We handle cases like this all the time. So, I mean, I mean, then I'm definitely going to email you then, you know, okay. since you have this kind of options, like we can pay monthly stuff like that. Right. For yeah. your fee. Yep. All right, cool. So I already have the email. I've been chatting with the Julia. Julia, right? Uh, yeah, who, I, yeah. I, I emailed to her, so I'm gonna get back to you with, okay. with my email. So yeah, just tell her you came on the show. She'll be glad. She'll listen. She'll she'll re rewatch it. Just say your B one B two. Great, great. Th thank you so much. Really appreciate right. that. Thanks a lot. So Later. yep. Uh, then uh, then I may leave. Then talk to you soon. Then thank you so much. Okay, bye, buddy. All right, thank you. Bye. All right. Uh, Donna's just holding forth in the chat. I think. I think more people come to t chat with Donna in the chat than come to hear me answer questions. The chat's where it's all, the chat's where it all goes down. All right. Hello, Odia. Yeah, Jim, how are you doing? I'm well, how are you? Fine, thank you. Thank you for having me. Sure. I have a question. Um, our um, green card is still on review right like uh, we have the work permit and but we're waiting for the uh, I-130 validation but my first daughter had a um, college uh, acceptance in the American University of Paris we French citizens so she got accepted in a uh, American University of Paris. So we were thinking that even if the green card is validated before September, where August, where she has to resume school in France, uh, what would that cost her? Because uh, my our green card is marriage based, and my husband and I we haven't been married up to two years, so probably. If it's validated, it's going to be two years uh, green card. So, and the college is um, four years over there. So even if she plan, she's planning to come over every uh, vacation to stay with us. But what is going to, what does she risk with her status by accepting to go to the American school in Paris? Okay, so. Your spouse is a U.S. citizen. Yes. And everybody is inside the United States. Yes, we three of us we are here. Yes. So that that's the three of you: your U.S. citizen spouse, you, and your daughter, who's like ready to go to college. We are. I have two daughters. They're two daughters. both here, and this first one is ready to go to college. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So when did you and the college daughter enter the United States? Um, June 2022. What kind of a visa? 
uh, we have um, Esther. Hmm. Okay. So you enter in June 2022. When do you file for the green card? Uh, December 2023. And so... Everybody was out of status at the time that, yeah. So daughter can't go to school in France until she gets her green card. Until she get the green card. Right. Okay. So when she get the green card, uh, knowing that the green card is going to be like for two years and the college study is four years, she's planning to do the master's here in the United States. But the first green card we're going to have is going to be two years. So how can she go out of United States with two years green card for school? Or well, for the renewal, is it gonna have, are we going to have a problem for her being out of the United States? So first of all, well, when, when you see you filed December of 23? Yes. What makes you think you're going to get the green card by August? Just... You know, we're just planning. We have, even though we're not sure, we have um, in the um, US, USCIS, USCIS uh, case, they put a, date, a deadline. Yeah, but they make that, they, those, things, those things don't mean anything. Why did, yeah. you wait, why did you wait so long to apply? Well, uh, first of all, it was, um, it was my fault. Okay. It was my fault. My husband wanted us to apply just right after uh, the, the the marriage, but I was so trying to have everything right. Read, you know, like. Wait, wait, wait. So when you entered, us, when you en when you entered, you weren't married. You got married. No, in no, no. We got married uh, uh, in August 2023. So basically you hung out for a year and then you got married and then in December you filed. Yes, exactly. Okay. Well, I think the chances of your daughter getting her green card before August are probably about 20%. You guys were all out of status at the time that you filed and you got married after coming on ESTA. They don't like either of those things. So I think the chances of her getting her green card in basically eight months are mm -hmm. low. Okay. Are low. Um, so I don't know if that's, I mean, I, I would encourage her to be thinking about going to school at least in the first year in the United States until things s settle down immigration wise. It might be another year before she gets that green card. Okay. Um, how old was she? How old was she when you married your husband? She was 17. Okay, good. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good. Okay. And so he filed an I 130 for you and an I 130 for each daughter. Yes, exactly. Yep. Yeah. And the I, those I one thirties are still pending, and the forty fives are still pending. Exactly. Yeah, it's only the I uh, seven eight five that's been yeah. approved. Yeah. Okay. So even if she let's 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 just change things up. Let's say she gets her green card tomorrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If she gets her green card tomorrow and she goes to school in France, I don't want her outside of the United States for more than six months. Oh, okay. So she's got to come home for Christmas. She's got to come home for the summers. She's got to make sure that she comes back every uh, six months. Now, the question you raised is, well, Jim, what happens with when the time comes for us to, well, oh, yeah, you didn't get married until 23. Okay. So you'll probably get, you'll probably get a two-year green card, like you said. And then that's sort of tricky because – if she's been in France for most of the two years, even without breaking it, they, you know, she's supposed to have that green card for the purposes of permanent residence, but she's living all of her time in France. Yeah. So, I mean, if I'm in charge from a purely immigration standpoint, I don't want her going to school in France until she has the 10 year green card. That's what I was thinking. too. yep. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I think there's too much at risk. Yeah, to be on the safe side, that's what I was thinking. I said because uh, for the for the renewal, even though we have believers, we have faith. Like she said, like oh, um, we prayed for my college, and then 
if God really wants me to go there, he's going to make way. We've done our parts. Yeah. Those things. I, I believe that. I believe tell, that. Tell, tell, you, that. Tell you did your parts late, but you did, you did do your parts. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so she's like, if that's not going to be, if, if, if that's not gonna be good for us, like he's going, he's gonna, we're gonna be stranded. He's never, never gonna allow us, allow me to go back to France and study there. But I said yes, okay. Let me just do, like we, you know, faith is not uh, foolishness. So let me also make inquiries to make sure. Yeah, and we are doing the right. One, one other thing, really, what she should do. Is stay here, stay here for three years after she get, uh, you know, three years and get her citizenship. Well, okay. actually, no, no, she'll she'll have to do her citizenship on her own. Yeah, she'll have to wait five years because she'll be over eighteen when you naturalize. So we'll we'll talk about it later when we get closer down the road. But I would, yeah, okay. I, I agree with Robert. I would focus on getting her undergrad here in the United States and doing masters in France. That's what I would do. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. Initially, that's what she wanted, but yeah. the thing, uh, unfortunately, for now, most of the colleges that she has applied for, because of she's just started the middle school, uh, she started here two, like two years ago. So, and then we are the kind the the, the school district we are in is high, mm -hmm. you know. So. Unfortunately, for now, it's only the American uh, University of Paris that have accepted her. She has a good profile, but other schools here, because of the English, even though she's the school is very happy in two years, less than two years, she's perfectly speaking English. But this, the she had many people who recommended her. She did great. She has straight A's. Sure, but sure. the part, the part, the two years part that she's spent in France before coming here are uh, affecting the kind of schools that we have in our neighborhood. So they're rejecting her. So she was like, what do I do? And, don't and forget she doesn't want to go to the community college. She wants to go to, you know, our world, all those big schools that her friends want to go to. Don't forget too, that she'll have to pay <laughs> student rates if she doesn't get that green card too. That's that sucks too. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Odia. Good call. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Bye. All right. All right. Hey, uh, Donna's giving good advice out there. If you guys could leave us a five star review, I, I mentioned the other day we got a, a nasty one star review. So if we've ever given you any kind of value at all, please just go to reviewhackinglaw.com. I'll put it in the in the comments or in the yeah. Here it is. Leave us a review. Reviewhackinglaw.com. Just takes a minute to leave us a five star review. Maybe a little comment. Uh, that would be much appreciated. All right. Um, got time for a couple more calls. Let's see. Uh, Luis, are you there, Luis? Hey, Jim. How are you? Oh, I'm good, buddy. How are you doing? Good. Hey, Jim. Uh, I have a question. I think that I contacted you like uh, about like uh, four weeks ago. Okay. Uh, regarding about, I was asking uh, how long it will take to uh, to get there. The, I mean, the, the, your, your case will be adjudicated once that your priority date got current. So anyhow, so I got my green card last week. Great. Great. So yeah. give, us, give us a timeline, will you? Okay. Um, it, it was through uh, an H-1B. So uh, the petition, the A-140 was, okay, all, all the file was submitted on... November of uh, late of November 20, 2023. I, and the approval, the I-140 was approved just like a 24 hours, something like that. Uh, uh, then I got my, it was, uh, we were able to submit it, the concurrently filing. And I got my EAD and the travel, yeah, the, the traveling, the I-1, I-131, the advanced parole. Yeah. Like uh, mm, at the beginning of February, I think. It was at the middle of February. Okay. Then um, my priority date was um, October. In October 20, oh, it was October 27, 20, 2022. This is EB2? Yeah, 2022. Yep, EB EB three. 
EB3, okay. EB3, yep. Uh, and so, okay, so on the Visa Bulletin of uh, March, um, yep. Yeah. On March, it was, it was uh, not on the final action uh, current. Mm -hmm. So, uh, my on the Visa Bulletin of April, who, which was shot like at uh, the beginning on the first week of March, which was very fast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it jumped like a five weeks, five, six weeks, and I, I got current. And then how long after that did you receive the green card? This is very good information for me to know, Luis. I really appreciate you calling and telling me your story. So okay. <laughs> how, I know that. After, so after, is <laughs> yeah, after it becomes current, then how long till you get the green card? Like a month? Mm, no, it was less. It was like a, three weeks. Okay, great. The thing is this. This is the question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the attorney got the approval notice on March 29th, which was a Friday. Yeah, I know that Friday because that's when everything was due because of the fee increase. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. That, okay. So maybe that's something that makes sense. Okay. The thing is that uh, theoretically, I will not be uh, current until April 1st. Yeah. So April 1st was Monday. So the question is, it was that okay that I got my... my what's, the start, what's the start date on the green card? Which date it says on the green card? Yeah. Uh, March 28th. Mm. And the yeah. approval says uh, March 29th. So we've had some we've had some people get a little bit of pushback on that, but if if they ever try to mess with you on that, I know what to do, Louise. I we'll just we'll just sue them. But I think you're fine. I don't think you need to worry about it. Oh, you there? Oh yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Something I don't think you, I don't think you need to, I don't think you need to worry about it, Louise. I think you're fine. Okay. Yeah, because so you said that maybe it was because I mean something like uh, any reason like uh, could be like uh, it was when the the fees increased. I think they were just trying to move cases and and you know That's I don't what know, I, thought. I don't know the technical rules. I I don't know if the technical rule I I did see I did I I don't want to freak you out Luis, but I did see recently Somebody get denied for their citizenship because they said they got their green card too early when a priority date wasn't current. But I sued them and we got the decision reversed. So I don't think you need to worry about it. And if, if it ever comes up, just let me know and I know what to do. Okay, thank you. Because that, that's what I've heard that maybe for naturalization, maybe that might be an issue. But I don't know. Since I don't know what are the steps or the, what is the process to get like a naturalization, I don't know if they will check your... Your, yeah, they, uh, they your could. Bulletin, when your bulletin visa was current. That that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work from them. I don't think you need to worry about it. One thing, um, Nurse Laura said, and I think it's good advice. I would do a FOIA request on your whole immigration file. I think that's always a good idea. Hello. Well, there you sorry. Go. That's all right, buddy. I would just do one thing. Do one thing for me. Do a FOIA request, like Laura said, on your whole immigration file. I would love to see it. Send it over to me after you get it. Fill out that G639. It's free. They'll send it to you on a disc. Then send me all the stuff, and we'll go from there, okay? Okay, perfect. Okay. Bye, Luis. Congrats, okay. buddy. I'm happy for you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. See ya. All right, all right. Um, Ana Lucia, thank you very much for the five-star review. We appreciate that. Um, I'm going to take one more call, and then we'll call it a day. Taral Desai, are you there? Taral, are you there? I think Charles is good. Are you hey, there? how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, good. Hey, I got a question. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry my camera is pretty bad. <laughs> it's all right. I'll just turn off your camera. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm a derivative child to my mother. Uh, she got her F4 filed by my uncle uh, on 2006, right? And yeah. we got our petition approved in 2009, and we got the document. Uh, we got the welcome letter in 2022 March, and we got documentary qualified in November. And as per <coughs> like May visa bulletin next year, uh, next month, my final action is current. But I might, as per online, I see I might age out. So I have a question regarding that. How old are you? Um, I'm 25 right now. So your I-130 was pending for three years? Three, uh, technically four years short of four days. So it's three years and 
almost 11 months and like 25 days something like that but you're over 25 yes i just 25 i just turned 25 last month like this month april 3rd two weeks back okay so what's the question so i like if we consider final action date right so it, i will owe oh, about 21 years and one month so do how how should i go about counselor pro so i have everything approved right so i had a question that will counselor approve my my petition or I think, you, I think you i think you aged out it's not they don't have discretion they just can't do it if you aged out you aged out okay so then my my question to you is i saw that last year in 2023 uscis gave up uh they they put a policy that they they hold the age when you file a adjustment of status and they see the date of filing age the date of filing is their the age which locks for cspa right but you're not an adjustment case. You're out. Are you outside the United States, right? No, I'm, I'm inside the United States. I'm currently on my H-1B, working in Washington oh. D.C. Oh well, I mean, I'm happy to look all this stuff over, Terrell. The, the, this analysis, which CSPA and being in status and being able to adjust and that new interpretation, all that stuff takes some calculations and some thinking. So if you want to email me your timeline and all your dates and stuff, I'll okay. try to I'll try to help you figure out if you're going to age out or not. But um, I can't really do it on the show just because it's like math and shit. And I'm just, okay, no, it's okay. So uh, j just a basic question. Like, mm -hmm. let's say if my mother, she gets her green card and she comes to the United States, can I apply for adjustment of status as a derivative child or no? Yeah, that would be the plan. That was the plan. If you're eligible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and what if I, so I, I might get the interview letter, but is it okay if I don't show up to consular processing back in India? Uh, yeah. And then when she arrives in the United States, I can just file for adjustment of status, right? You might even apply earlier. Oh, can I apply before she gets, because we filed the adjustment of status back in 2022. So can I apply I-485 right now? You applied for, you said I applied for adjustment of status in 2022. I mean, and with consular processing. So when, when we get the welcome letter from NVC, right? So I applied for DS-260, paid all the visa fees and everything. Yeah, so there's a, that's that's another good question whether you should go overseas and do it. I don't know. I, I can't tell you that kind of. This is you're you're talking very technical legal stuff, and you're you know it's a very important. Oh, okay. Thing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. That's okay. I understand your concern. I'll email you. So okay. Right. So okay. I understand. So yeah. I can apply 485 after she once she's here, right? Okay. Bye, buddy. Okay. All right, everybody. That'll do it for tonight's show. We'll see us going to bed, so we might as well all go to bed. Actually. I'm going to go have some tacos here in a little bit. Maybe watch a little Cardinal baseball. Um, by the way, the Cardinals manager from when I was a kid, Whitey Herzog, passed away today. So we're very sad to see that. He helped the Cardinals win the World Series in 1982. I went with my dad. My dad didn't like baseball. And we had the choice to go to game one or game two. And the other people picked game one. So we got to go to game two. The Cardinals won that game five to two. And it was the first time I ever saw a naked lady because she climbed up on the Stan Musial statue. She was drunk and celebrating the Cardinals win. So thanks to Whitey Herzog and thanks to Rich for getting his green card. Everybody's happy for old Rich. Everybody, thanks for joining the show. And I'll see you, oh, tomorrow. So tomorrow's going to be like 2.30, I think, 2.30 Central Time, 2.30 Central Time in the afternoon. Then we're off on, no, then I'll do a show Thursday morning, off on Friday. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you uh Tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. I'm great about that, other than trying to help people who are in the state of the